Sorry, the Facebook layout has changed a bit. So bear with me. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Just now. Bear with me, bear with me. Ah, there we are. We are now on. Wonderful. So we are on. Bless you, Sister Kemi. God bless you. We are live on Facebook. You, so we're about to begin. I uh, greet you all in the mighty, wonderful, saving, powerful, awesome name of Jesus Christ. It's the name that heals. It's the name in which we have authority. It's the name that is above every name. It's the name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. I greet you all with Jesus' joy. Thank you for joining us one more time. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your diligence and coming on one more time here on Zoom and live on Facebook for our, for our Sunday evening um, short service. So that's a very, very short, encouraging word, more, more like. So before we do anything else, I am going to, we're going to open up in prayer. Sister Joyce, if you are um, able to, could you pray the opening prayer for us? And then we'll get into a short time of worship and then into the word. Sister Joyce. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord God. We lift you up, Holy Father, and we bless and glorify your most holy name. Right now, God, we give you thanks for another opportunity to get together, Father God, to work, to give you praise and thanks and to acknowledge, Father God, that you are our king. You are the great I am. You are the one that sits high and looks low, Father God. You are the one that, that feeds our every need, Father. We worship and adore you. We praise your name. And Lord, as we come together once again, Lord, even if in a short time, just to feed on your word, we pray that you will bless us, Father God, that you will give us meat, Father God, in due season that we will feast on it father god and be strengthened lord we bless your name we honor you and we give you all the praise and all the glory god for it all belongs to you acknowledge uh, take all our praises lord god we give it all to you in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen thank you so much oh lord our lord how excellent is your name your name is strength your name is power a strong tower that makes me safe oh lord our lord how excellent is your name your name is strength yes your name is power a strong tower that makes me say oh oh, oh. there's nobody like you love Nobody like you, Lord, and we're singing in oh, 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 nobody like you, Lord, nobody like you, Lord, oh, oh, oh. there's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh, you get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. Oh, you get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. 
because truly there is nobody like him. We praise him because he is incomparable. We worship him because he's God all by himself. Oh, that is a beautiful song. There truly is nobody like the Lord, none at all. No matter where you go, no matter what you get into, no matter who you call, there is nobody that can do you like Jesus. There is nobody like the Lord. So as we always say every Sunday evening, for those of you who have joined us on Facebook, God bless you. We always say on a Sunday evening, we are not going to be before you long. And we really do not. We're not here long on a Sunday. So if you're joining us, I promise you, you'll only be there for a short time. I want to speak to you tonight from the book of or the epistle of Ephesians, the second chapter. And I want um, just four verses for verse 19 down to verse 22 of uh, Ephesians chapter two. I'm gonna read in your hearing. It reads thus, now therefore ye are, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. 22 and last, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the spirit. I just want to speak to you in brief on the, on the topic, what a building, what a building. And uh, we've already prayed, this is a Joyce prayed. So we're going to move right in. When we read the text in the epistle of Ephesians and the second chapter uh, from say about uh, the verses that we read 19 down, when we read it carefully, it is clear that Paul, the writer, is describing the church. He's describing the church. Throughout his many epistles, he has referred to the church as the body of Christ. That's found in 1 Corinthians 12. We see reference being made by Paul in which he parallels the church to the workings of the human body. When we consider the workings of the human body, uh, let's say the, the limbs, each limb, foot, arms, all those, the appendages um, are connected. They are connected by joints. Each appendage has its own function. So um, yet the foot doesn't do what the arm does. <laughs> yeah. So too are the other organs, the eyes, um, they're for vision. The, the nasal passages are for smelling, the ears for hearing. Also, the internal organs, they too have their, their own functions. Though each is different and its function may be different, collectively, they make up the body. They make up the body. Similarly, those in the church, um, are they may be different. The Bible tells us, um, Paul wrote, he said, there are differences of administrations. There are differences. Um, there are, uh, I forget it, what he's saying. I'm so tired. <laughs> but, but the same Lord. And so there may be different things that we have to do. Or function may be different, but collectively, collectively, we make up the church. Paul described it as a body of many different parts, all of which are equally important to the overall functioning of the whole. All parts are equally important to the overall functioning of the whole. The church comprises the body of Christ on the earth, where his eyes, where his ears, where his hands, where his feet, where his heart, and so on, and such the like. We should take on then his nature and manifest his example, that is to be Christ-like in our behavior, in our attitude, in our love, in our lifestyle, and so on. We also see the church being referred to as, as the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ. As a bride is significant and precious to her groom, so also is the church's significance to Jesus Christ. 
we see where there's a parallel made between Christ and the church where Paul taught further down in um, Ephesians that how the husband should love the wife and how the wife should treat the husband. And then he said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Uh, we also see the church being referred to as a body of believers, Christian believers who have embraced the gospel message of salvation, those who have by faith received the washing away of their sins and cleansing of their earthly uncleanliness, uh, those who have turned away from sin through repentance. They have taken on the name of Jesus in water baptism, having put on Christ as a garment and being buried with him by baptism into death. Those who have by faith received the gift of the Holy Ghost and have renounced the hidden things of darkness. These have become the body of believers, having entered the community of the righteous, being adopted into the family of God, are indeed Christ's body of believers. The church is also um, known as a community of faith, a community of faith. Without faith, we know one cannot enter the church. Oh, we're not talking about the building here. Stay with me. Without faith, one cannot even please God. Without faith, one cannot grasp the concept nor accept the message of salvation, for we are saved by faith. So if you can't uh, get yourself to that faith walk, then you can't receive the salvation message. Faith is the only currency which, by which heaven transacts business. So if you do not possess the currency of heaven, which is faith, then heaven has no dealing with you. Amen. Right now, some of us, we have no buildings in this current pandemic. We have no buildings in which to worship because of the pandemic. But be encouraged. You do not have to have or be in a building. You are the church. You don't have to be in a building to be the church. You are the church. For the church is not a building. It's not a building. If it were to be called a building, and we're looking on the theme tonight, oh, what a building. Um, that building would not be made with bricks. It would not be made with mortars. It would not be made with stone. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't even be made with hands. The building of the church is a spiritual building, not made with hands, but rather made by the power of God. Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, wanted to share some significant facts about the church. Paul wanted them to realize that now that they have tasted of the heavenly calling, now that they have um, tasted of the world to come and have been partakers of the good word of God, now that they have accepted salvation through the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, now that they have, be have become part of the church, a body of believers. Now they are there were therefore no more strangers and foreigners, but but fellow citizens with the saints and were of the household of God. You see, you'd have to read at the beginning to see where he says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, having come out of that state by the power of God and by faith through the working and the works of Jesus Christ, we've now become a um, fellow citizens with the saints. We've now, um, we're now being counted as the household of God. He says, those who are in the church are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In relation to architecture, and I don't know much about that area, a cornerstone um, is traditionally the first stone laid for a structure with all other stones laid in reference. A cornerstone marks the geographical location by orient, orienting a building in a specific direction or direction. A cornerstone is important. The church is built upon the foundation of the teachings and dogma of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, 9 downwards, Paul says, for we are laborers together with God. We're working in partnership with him. We are his husband's husbandry. We are God's building. He said, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise man, 
master builder. He said, you got to build with some wisdom here. You got to apply wisdom when you build. He said, I've laid the foundation and another builder thereon, but let every man take heed how he build it thereon. And then he said, very keen, very key scripture uh, verse in verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So if you are building on the building of the church, the foundation must be that which is already laid of being Jesus Christ. You can't build the church on black history. Mm -hmm. You can't build the church on doctrines contrary to the word of God. You have to build the church on Jesus Christ. You can't build the church on Buddha. You can't build the church on um, Mohammed or Allah. You can't build a church in Hare Krishna. It won't work. The church must be built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. No other foundation can be laid and no other building blocks can be used either. You've got to use what God has specified. It is in Jesus, the foundation and chief cornerstone in whom all the building, mm, all of us who are part of the building, it's in him that we're fitly framed together. And it's in him that together we grow onto an holy temple in the Lord. You gotta be in Jesus. Hallelujah. It's also in him that we are builded together for a habitation of God through the spirit. It's in Jesus Christ that we're built. It's upon him, the foundation that we should build. And we should use the things of the apostles and the prophets. Hallelujah. And uh, we got to remember, not only is Christ the chief cornerstone, but he's also the foundation. The building then must be done according to the scriptural specification because the building of the church is not made with hands. <laughs> the building of, of the church is a spiritual house and it will only stand in its completion when we all together have been fitted together in, in our several functions. And when we have matured unto an holy temple in the Lord, then whoo, what a building. <laughs> oh, glory to God. One which God will inhabit through the spirit. Oh, what a building. I want to be a part of the building. I want to be a part of the building, y'all. Mm -hmm. Years ago, years ago, when I just um, started going to uh, Mount Zion in Nottingham, pastor anderson he wasn't a pastor then he's the pastor now he taught us in a school class that i've never forgotten he was talking about buildings and he referred to um he referred to the scaffolding which goes around the building while while the building is being erected and he spoke about how important the scaffolding was in the actual building of the building while the building is being erected the scaffolding it runs through the building the incomplete building that is yet being built it runs around the circumference of the building as well however as important as the scaffolding is during the building of the building during 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 the erection of the building he he said no the scaffolding is was never part of the building it isn't. And therefore, if you don't know, you might look and think the scaffolding is very important. It is part of the building. But, but if you keep looking and watching, you'll see when the building stands in its glory, when it's completed, the scaffolding is torn down and discarded because it was never part of the building. It might have been necessary. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. For the building to be erected. It runs the circumference of the building. It runs through the building, sometimes even higher than the building because they have to you be standing on it to put the bits on the top, depending on what they're doing. I, I, I might sound stupid right now because it's not my area, but I'm just trying to summarize what he said. He said, make, make sure as a child of God, while you're coming to church, while you're in the church, and we spoke about this morning, getting in the building, but not getting in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. That's another story for another time. He said, Pastor Anderson said to us, and I never forgot. He said, make sure you are not part of the scaffolding. Don't be there just to allow somebody else to be erected. 
Don't be there just to allow somebody else to matriculate to where they need to be. Don't be there just to allow somebody else to be matured in Christ and then you're discarded. He said, make sure you're part of the building. Mm, that teaching has never left me. And so I want to say to you tonight, be sure that you're part of the building. Ensure that in your Christian walk, you are part of the building and not the scaffolding. Be part of the church of Jesus Christ. Be part of the body of believers. Be a part of the bride of Christ. Be a part of the body of Christ. Be a part of the church. God bless you in Jesus' name. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Teresa to close us out in prayer. Father God, as we come before you in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, this evening for this word that you've given us. We pray, dear God, that this word that you've given us will manifest into our lives this week and beyond in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, and we honour you. And we thank you that we can still celebrate your presence and be in your presence um, for, for for the rest of this week and continuous in the name of Jesus. As we continue to read your word, O oh God, we pray, dear God, that it will continue to enlighten us and to to uh, allow us to get to know you even more and more and more and to fall in love with you even more. So Father God, we thank you, we praise you and we honor you that your hand is continuous on, on us in the name of Jesus. As we go about our separate ways this evening, I pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to uphold us, strengthen us and protect us in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name, I pray, hallelujah. Amen, amen. And the date for all your diaries, uh, on the 31st of October, King's Chapel will be having, and the flyers will be out soon, we'll be having a Zoom one-day convocation, a God Encounters Zoom convocation. We should be, we should have been at the end of October in a retreat, but because of COVID, of course, it had to be cancelled. So we are planning a just a one-day on the 31st, the Saturday, 31st, one-day convocation. Watch this space. We have some um, awesome dynamic speakers lined up and we're looking forward to celebrating with you. Come and celebrate with us. There will be a sign up, um, sign up form on our, on our website, probably starting next week or the week after. We don't, we don't wanna start it too early. And, and we're looking forward to you coming to join us on the 31st of October, right here on Zoom. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.